and thank you and welcome to our what's for dinner cooking class. So we've got uh, five different dishes that are going to be presented to you tonight. Um, for those who haven't met me before, my name is Teresa Van Gessel, just like it says on the screen. And I am lucky enough to be the business development manager for the vivid branch of Thermomix Consultants in Sydney. Um, and we cover Oh, look, Barara across to Avalon, all the way down to Botany Bay, the city, everything in between. Um, and we, so yeah, very much all about Sydney. And um, we are, I'm just going to remind my children that I'm actually on the camera and you can talk outside. There we go. Right. Everyone's under control here. In case you haven't realised, this is very real life. So what I normally say is, Thank you for having us in your homes and welcome to our homes. Hopefully mine will be relatively quiet, teenagers going out, but dogs are being brought in. So I may have to mute suddenly so you don't go deaf. Um, tonight we, so I started to say, yes, so we're the consultants that cover a large chunk of Sydney. Now I know some of you are from outside Sydney, but that doesn't matter. We welcome you anyway. Um, and as I've already confessed, I actually live a couple of hours south of Sydney, so I'm very comfortably not in lockdown, but my heart is with all of my people up there. And the reason we're putting on these classes is because we know how hard lockdown is, and we know that providing some inspiration around food um, is really important. Some of you have thermomixes, some of you don't have them yet. Some of you have had them for a while, but maybe have lost your thermojo, as we like to call it when we're being really clever. Um, so the idea of this is to give you some inspiration Right, someone muted me by accident. I can see who it is because she's covered her face going, ooh. So I'll introduce you to Anne-Marie, the guilty party, because she's actually monitoring the chat for us today. So as you uh, have questions, please pop stuff in the chat. And Anne-Marie, who's very good at muting me, will respond as well if I'm not doing it. Um, the other thing is for anyone who isn't aware, at the end of this cooking class, I'm going to run a short question and answer information session about joining our business because we all love being Thermomix consultants so much. Well, as I always like to say, I loved it so much. I didn't buy the business, but I joined. I actually became an employee. Um, but every, I loved when I was a consultant and a team leader, and we want to keep that option open for all of you. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more, no obligation. At the end, we'll have a chat, and it's your opportunity to ask questions. Okay, so I'm going to hand you over now to the... I'm just checking my my chat run list to make sure I don't put the wrong person on the spot to Clelia. Now Clelia is going to introduce herself but I just need to share with you Clelia is someone who I first met just over a year ago on a cooking class just like this. We did a, a business information session after the cooking class and she said oh I actually think I'm interested and not only did she join the business but tomorrow I'm very excited to say Clelia is actually starting her own team. So an absolute walking example of what is possible from coming to one of our cooking classes. But enough about me, Clelia is going to show you how to make chicken, basil, red pepper or red capsicum depending where you're from, spaghetti. Over to you Clelia. Hi everyone, thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, it's a very dangerous place. When you come to these classes, you never know what can happen. <laughs> so <laughs> another lockdown a year later, here I am, um, having fun. So um, if you're wondering uh, my name, I think Theresa said it already, um, my name is rather strange because I am Italian by origin and um, Australian, adopted now, but deeply Italian. So I'm cooking pasta today because what else uh, would my family eat? Uh, other than pasta. Um, it's a quick meal and I'm going to chat a bit more about other quick meals that you can make that involve pasta for dinner but uh, let's get started first so as it cooks I'll just share a few more tips. So this is um, a standout dish everyone loves it it's got chicken basil and um, roasted red pepper and if you don't have roasted red pepper, don't panic. I've made it several times with fresh um, capsicum as well. So that is also good. I'm gonna start cooking. Um, I think most of you that are watching, if not all of you already have a Thermomix. If you don't have a Thermomix, I'm sure um, you will get um, to see how it all works. I just clicked on my garlic cooking and I've started the recipe. The first thing we do 
as we grate our cheese. So nothing new there. We just pop the cheese in. And my little tip is it says 80 grams and I've actually popped in 135. Quite often I do double as much um, because this is me just um, grating my cheese for the week or for the next few days, whatever that is. So when you are grating cheese in your Thermomix, always pop a little bit extra because then you won't have to do it later. So that's <laughs> That was eight seconds of speed eight. Sorry, when it, um, the noise cuts with, uh, with Zoom. So you probably didn't hear me for a few seconds, but there's our grated cheese. So I'm just going to pop it into a container where I keep all my grated cheese. So I've got a tiny bit left. But this is what I do I just pop in fresh cheese on top and I just keep um, that in the fridge for when I need it. Next is um, we're going to start on our sauce. So the beauty of this recipe is that it cooks the pasta with the sauce. So you start by making the sauce and then you pop the pasta in at the end. It's a one pot wonder. And I'm just going to start with the basic, you know, um, that smells really good ingredients, which is garlic and one onion and some chili. And then you can omit the chili, obviously, if um, the kids or the rest of the family aren't a big fan. Um, and then just some olive oil. So what I'm gonna do now, that was 40 grams of olive oil, one onion and three um, cloves of garlic. So what's happening with this, it's gonna um, chop it for me first and then we're gonna cook it. So we've got five seconds of speed five, just chopping it all up. <laughs> And before we have it cooking, I'm just gonna push it all down towards the center, which is uh, what makes it, um, pushes it towards the blade and where the heat comes from, and then it'll, it's just gonna soak. So it's gonna cook for about three minutes now. I'm just pushing it all down, and I'm just gonna pop it back on. And as it cooks, we're gonna talk about pasta. <laughs> All right, so we've got about three minutes there, 100 degrees, speed one, and let's saute um, onion garlic with the beautiful olive oil. Um, so I've prepared a few little ideas um, that um, I wanted to share with you on other alternative dishes that are similar to this one um, that I love to cook for my family during the week. When you know you're really busy, you come home, you're really tired, quite think. Um, everyone loves pasta. So one of my super favorites is, besides the one we're cooking today, is the um, creamy um, tomato and chorizo, is it? <laughs> Fettuccine. Yeah. Um, and the other one, which is actually one of our um, top 10 all-time favorite recipe on Cookie Do. Everyone absolutely loves that one. It's really creamy and similar to this one, you cook the sauce first and then you put the pasta in and it all cooks together and it's already in one heat. That's also another 30 minute dish. Um, another one that we do love is the one pot Mexican pasta or a little bit of a twist. Um, if you are uh, looking at something different, uh, really, we, do, we do really like that one. And it's a, um, again, same uh, concept, 30 minute dish all goes in and then it's ready for the family to enjoy. All these recipes make big quantities as well. So, um, you know, depending on how big your family is, you might have leftovers for the next day for lunchtime as well. Um, the main thing is um, with pasta and all that, um, you can, if you're in a rush, you can cook, you know, out of the packet, no troubles. So if you see me crying, it's the onion. I am really, really bad with onion. Thank God I've got a thermomix because otherwise I would be weeping um, <laughs> not to no end right now. Um, the other thing I was going to say is you can also make your own fresh pasta in the thermomix. It's really, really super easy. We're not going to do it today because we obviously are um, talking about quick meals. So you don't make pasta if you're in a hurry. Um, but um, if you want to tune in next week, we'll probably um, we are talking about doing something Italian based at Mumma makes some fresh pasta on Zoom. Um, I have some tips also on quick, um, quick things that I do for my family. Um, I prep on a weekend. 
So um, during the week, when I want to do a quick pasta dish, I've already got the sauces made. One that I really, really love is the chunky bolognese sauce from Skin Mixes, which is also on Cookie Do. It's amazing. Um, it takes about an hour to cook, but the prep time is super quick. And it cooks the tomato sauce at the bottom, and then it cooks the mince inside the bowl in the simmering basket. The flavor is amazing. And then you pop it in the fridge. And then when you're in a rush during the week, you just bring it all together. Pasta cooks in 10 minutes and you can literally have dinner ready in like 15, 20 minutes. So that was three minutes, it's finished. And I'll come back to the meal prep on the weekend. We'll keep cooking. Um, so this is now sauteed, how quick was that? Um, I wish you could smell it. I'm sorry, I'm crying a little bit, but you know, you could be crying with me and smell these um, delicious um, sauteed onions that I've just made. So the next thing I'm gonna pop in is the roasted peppers. So what I do, I buy a big jar like that. Um, this is from my local um, deli, but you can find them everywhere. And it's really good value for money. And I actually change the recipe a little bit and use less. So that's about a kilo of um, red peppers. So what I do, I actually only use, um, the recipe calls for 700, I only use for about 500 because they're really quite flavorsome. And I pop in 350 now and then the rest um, later at the end, like little strips. But then that makes two um, rounds of pasta. So it's actually a really good, um, if you like it that way uh, and the flavor, um, is still, is still quite intense, then it's obviously a good um, money saving exercise as well. So I'm just popping all the um, capsicum in, which is just roughly chopped because then the thermomix is gonna chop it for me. And then I'm gonna pop in 100 grams of water. So now we're creating the base of our pasta. We're just making the sauce. 100 grams of water, a little bit more, doesn't matter. And then I'm going to pop in fresh basil. So in it goes. And next, we're gonna blend it for about a minute. And off we go. So one minute at speed eight. Hopefully you can hear me. If you can't hear me, Fraser, you can take over for about a minute. Can you hear me? Awesome. All right. Thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's getting louder and louder, Clelia. <laughs> We'll see if we can hear you when you talk. The other thing I was going to mention is um, other sources that you can get on the weekend. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I make passata, I make tomato sauce on the weekend. So that is something that is really useful during the week. You can prep that, yeah, sugar, tomato. So you can make it on a salad and then pop it in the fridge. And during the week, you can make quick meals with um, a tomato base with pasta. I make um, tomato with ricotta cheese, which I also make in my family. You know, you can add um, anything to it. A little bit of chicken, you know, you can, you can play with the basic tomato sauce and add a lot of flavor to it, feta, olives, you know, the options are endless. And you've got this big jar of tomato sauce in your fridge that you made on a Sunday, and then you can quickly whip together a pasta during the week. So now this is now looking actually a lot like tomato sauce, which is beautiful. It smells fantastic. So that's all blended together. And all I'm doing now, I'm just adding in um, a little bit more water to it. And then I'm gonna add some cream and then I'm gonna add the chicken to it. So we got another 50 grams of water and it goes. Pop in some cream, it says double cream. I'm just using thickened cream because um, that's, this is what I had and I hate waste. So I didn't, um, and obviously as we know, uh, Sydney, not a good idea to go to the shops just for one thing. And then just a little bit of chicken stock. So I only had have vegetable stock paste. Um, you can make chicken stock in your Thermomix and it's fantastic. I just ran out for today. So when you run out of chicken stock paste or if you haven't made it and the recipe calls for it, one little tip is just use veggie stock paste. It's totally fine. The flavor profile is a little bit different. But in my opinion, it's still better than actually um, using the, the stock cubes that we buy from the supermarket. 
And then we're popping in a little bit of salt and pepper that are pre portioned for you. And then um, we pop in our chicken, which I skipped. Anyway, chicken goes into it. <laughs> and it's gonna cook for about 10 minutes. And as this one cooks, um, we're probably gonna come back to me, I think. So I can show you how the pasta business works. But basically my pot is full of peppers, it's full of chicken, double cream, water. It's gonna cook for 10 minutes now, reverse and spoon speed at high degrees. And then all I do after 10 minutes, I'm gonna pop the pasta through the hole and it's all gonna to cook together. So if you wanna jump back, I'll show you that in about 10 minutes. We will definitely do that. Um, there was a question about just how much chicken you were adding. Ah, oh, sorry, half a kilo of chicken. I yep. just um, push up there, about two centimeter size. It, all in, I've actually put about 600 and something because the butcher was um, quite generous when I put it the other day. All goes in and we're fine. <laughs> There's also a question about how many portions does this recipe make? Oh, that is a very good question. So if you want to find out about the recipe as you actually are cooking, you cook on the three little dots next to the, your next button on your screen and you can go back to the recipe details and check. Uh, so this is making six portions. Based on what we eat, it's a little bit more than that, also because I've added a little bit more. But, you know, if you're really hungry, six people. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, we will come back to you, but right now we are going to head over to the lovely Linda Petroni, who is going to be making sour cream and chicken enchiladas. Over to you, Linda. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, sour cream, chicken enchiladas, a huge family favourite in this house and something that you can prepare before, throw in the freezer or make on the night or the day if it's lunch or dinner. I'm going to show you a couple of quick tips also. The first thing that I'm going to do is talk to you about, and it was a lovely segue, thank you very much, Clelia, about tomatoes. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about whole tomatoes in tins versus chopped tomatoes. It's always better to get a whole tomato than it is a chopped tomato. And that's because the chopped tomatoes or bits and pieces of the, you know, whatever's left over at the, at the plant, um, whereas the whole tomatoes, you know exactly what you're seeing. If your recipe calls for a puree, just grab your tomato tin, throw it in your Thermomix, give it a blitz for um, five uh, seconds, speed five. And I'm not sure if you know this tip, on your screen, if you press the home button and you're in the middle of a recipe, you can just basically um, go into the manual mode screen. So five, um, speed five, five seconds, giving that a little bit of a blast. And that'll just chop those tomatoes for you. So don't worry about specifically going out to buy tins of chopped tomatoes. And the reason why I'm using um, the tomatoes is because I'm going to use it as a topping with my enchiladas. The other thing I wanted to show you, and I'm showing off with two jugs here, but as Thermomix consultants, we get two jugs. That's a funny look. Don't no one to take a photo of that screen. All right. Now, another thing is I'm using these. These are fabulous. And these are from the mix shop. These silicon bags, um, are fabulous for the fridge, freezer, and great for liquid stocks and things like that. So I've already done one tin that I pureed there. I hold it into, that's just an easy way for me to pour, and then I can pour the rest of it, as you can see, in there. And then it's got a measure on the front of it as well. I'm not sure if you can see that. These are fantastic. But they've got little measures on the front. Can you see that? So you can actually, um, you know, exactly how much liquid you've got if it's a soup or if it's something like that, and then they've got um, great little seals that you can just seal it up. I wanted to show you that because um, when it comes to sauces, soups, stocks, and things like that, it's a really good idea to make use of uh, the Thermomix to actually blend all that stuff and prepare it. Okay, so now, the next thing I'm going to do is just prepare the ingredients, oh, sorry, prepare the, um, the filling for my enchiladas. So um, it's as simple as going in with some ingredients. Here I've got, I didn't have red onion, so I've substituted out here with some spring onion, tomato, chili, garlic, and capsicum all going in. And we give that a quick chop when I can find a clean lid. Here's one that I prepared earlier. Okay. Um, and we're just going to give that a quick chop for a couple of seconds. Okay, so once we've done that, we're just going to season and scrape down. 
So nothing fancy to see here, bit of color, but otherwise it's just popped it all nicely. So I'm going to throw some in there. Well, not throwing, I'm grating. Throwing. I get a bit carried away with my words. Um, so we've got some pepper in there. Now this recipe calls for olives. If you want to leave the olives out, that's totally fine. We've done that before in this house. Um, sometimes the kids get a bit picky, but um, otherwise we throw some olives in there. This is all in this recipe you'll get in the um, in the email that we send out to you as well as what we're popping in the chat there. So chicken on chalanas is, is the main, what it's called. Um, the other thing that goes in is sour cream. Now, with the sour cream, if you're uh, worried about some of those COVID kilos like me, <laughs> yeah, I've got a few, I actually mix this with um, some yogurt and totally fine. So if you want to sort of thin that out a little bit or you know, put a bit of make it a bit lighter, that's a, another tip for you. Um, some lime juice that goes in there and some grated cheese. Now I grated my cheese earlier in the Thermomix. Um, I'm sure you don't need to see grated cheese. Clearly has already told you how wonderful um, that actually comes together. So, oh, and I'm sorry, and I'm going to put um, some coriander and spring onions. Now, at this time of, during COVID, of course it's really tricky to sometimes get all the fresh ingredients. What I've been doing for myself during this time is I've gone to the supermarket and I've grabbed a couple of these little things that you find in the salad sort of section. And these are quite handy just to keep in the fridge. If it's looking for a fresh um, alternative uh, during COVID lockdown, fabulous idea to go with that, something like that. So we've got all those ingredients in and now we're just going to um, mix that up. So that's only literally two seconds on speed four. And you'll notice that when you do this recipe, it goes into reverse, okay? So it doesn't need to chop it any further. Okay, so now it's a bit of a, um, a mushy now, and I'll show you all of that in a second. But what one of the other steps in this recipe and how it starts is actually cooking some chicken in the Varoma. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to, to uh, cook chicken in front of you for 16 minutes, two lots of eight minutes. So what I've done is I've made the um, chicken before, and I've used the liners that come in the mix shop, but I'll just show you those because I've got some handy. They're the Varoma sheets. And these ones here have got the, um, the holes in them. These are fabulous if you do things like dumplings and stuff like that as well, or they're solid ones that you can put if you don't want the juices of chicken and stuff going in when you're doing multi-level cooking. Fantastic. So anyway, so I've got my chicken. Um, I put it over the two layers of the Thermix. I popped it on and I cooked it with some water in there. That's already done. So I'm going to now add those ingredients um, to the recipe. So we're just popping our chicken in one layer of the chicken and I always do a little bit extra. So that's my other tip for you. The recipe calls for about, from memory, 800 grams. I always go in about at least a kilo. There's, you know, like, don't be shy people, just, just go in. It makes a lot of food and it's really yummy and the Thermomix can cope with that little bit of extra. So, you know, pop it in. All right. Look, some recipes you can't do that. So just be mindful, always watch the max when it comes to liquid, there's a max marker in your jug. That's really important to follow in some recipes, liquid recipes. But when you're doing chopping and things like that, you know, just go for it. Okay, so this now um, goes in. We popped in all of these. We popped in all of this, 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 this. We've got it all in. And we're going to go six seconds reverse speed four. So um, six seconds reverse speed four. And that's just going to mix that together. And then I'm going to show you how we assemble. Uh, the wonderful conchiladas. Okay, so it's really quick. It's quick and easy. Right, so you can have a look at it at this point. Now, you, you do remember I put a bit extra in, so I'm just going to stir this around and see what my consistency is like, that I don't have any big lumps in there. No, nah, looks like it's combined. I'm just going to give you a, a look. So that's sort of come together there, big white mess, I call it but totally fine. No point in getting another dish out or anything, but I'm not gonna go in with any metal. I've got silicon spoons and stuff, and that's how I'm gonna roll. Okay, baking dish. And you can do two things here. 
You can go for a smaller dish, like a small baking dish, something sort of that size. Um, I tend to do them in a big one like this. So, and your wraps can be the big sandwich wraps or you can go with small tortillas. Whatever you can get your hands on, it doesn't really matter. I start at the back of the dish here and I start with my first portion. So it's about just popping a little bit on here in a line, can you see that? And then we give it a bit of a roll and we push that one back and then we go with the next one. So you just keep doing this until you've filled your dish. So keep layering, rolling one after another. And as I say, don't overfill them either because that's not fun, but just roll it back on itself and then pop it down and then go with the next one. So once you've filled in your dish, um, what you do next is that uh, tomato that I actually blitz, we then, I'm not gonna get to roll all of these and show you the whole lot, but what you would do here is we blitzed up that tomato, as I said before, in the bag. The next step for this is we pour the tomato um, on top of the actual um, enchiladas. And then what we do is we've got some extra grated cheese, you sprinkle that on, and then we've got uh, some spring onions, tomato, and the rest of the um, coriander. And if you're not a coriander fan, fine, leave it out and then sprinkle that on. And then it just goes in the oven. It's as simple as that. It's the easiest dish. I'm gonna finish this off. I'm gonna throw it in the oven and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the end result. But you're gonna love this one. It's a real family favorite at a home. Thank you, Linda. I'm just gonna check, Clelia, are we ready to have a look at your spaghetti going in? Perfect, let's swap screens. Spot on 10 minutes, Linda, well done. <laughs> it just finished. And I just click next and literally all I need to do next is just put the pasta in. So this is my um, really good quality Italian pasta. It's all written in Italian. When you can't read it, you know it's good quality. So it just goes in through the hole. Um, and again, it's 250 grams of pasta. So one packet of pasta, even if you splashed and a splurge on some good Italian pasta, um, it will still do um, two of these for you. So you just pop it in like that through the hole. And then click next, it says without measuring cup. And then you just turn it on and it's about 13 minutes. So all it does is not gonna start stir and slowly go in and basically um, disappear to the hole. And when the, it does that, I'm just gonna pop the measuring cup on and it's just gonna keep clicking. And then it's ready. I'm just gonna plate it up for you. And my dinner's ready, which is fantastic. We will look forward to seeing it at the end. This is where I actually start to complain about the fact that I am a few hours away and I can't drop around for a, you know, Uber Eats home delivery. So <laughs> thank you. Next up, we have our very lovely, now I've just got to make sure I find both her cameras because we're actually going to Sharon, who when I find where she's hiding on my screen, Sharon's got two cameras, so I'm going to add one. And I'm going to reply. That that's just her. Obviously, that's just the top of uh, her family. Kathy first. Sorry, Kathy. Oh, there you go. I thought I was going to Sharon first. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. Sorry, Sharon. Apparently, I'm not going to you. I'm going. <laughs> this is where you realise that we're not professionals. We're all very much amateurs. Uh, and uh, I apologise. Kathy, the delightful Kathy Ferguson, is going to show you how to make zucchini lasagna. Sorry about that, everybody. I thought I was, I thought I was going to have a break. So, yeah. Anyway, um, Kathy here. Today I'm making for you the zucchini lasagna, and that's from um, one of our recipe collections on Cookie Do, and it's from the Low Carb collection. Um, this is a dish you can make ahead. You can store it in your fridge for um, up to five days, or you can freeze it up to step eight without the, the cheese top. So I'll talk through that in a moment. But basically what you do is you slice your um, zucchini. And as I've done here, you can see them there. You can do that with a mandolin or you can do it with a knife. The only tip I'd give you is if you're doing it with a knife, be careful, make sure you cut one edge and then when you've got it on your board, it's easier and it won't roll around. So you slice that up and the recipe calls for you to take out the um, seeds. So you'll find in the middle, you'll end up with a square part. You can keep those to put into stock 
or you can put them into smoothies, whatever you like. Some people will choose to slice it all and um, that's, that's fine too. You will find that uh, once you've sliced this and you put your salt on, it will draw out the moisture anyway. So I've done this um, already. So basically what you need to do is put your paper towel on it and press it down and just soak up that. I'll let that soak up there for a moment. And I've already gone ahead in a few steps with the, with the recipe. So to start off with, it calls for um, the garlic, onion, carrot and celery, which I've put in and I've chopped it up. Um, I haven't peeled the carrots, so just wash them all and cut them into small, like about a, no bigger than a two centimetre chunk. And I've put those in, I've put them in with the oil and I've cooked those for five minutes. Then I've added um, half of the uh, mince, which is uh, 250 grams. And that's where I am at the moment. So I've um, cooked that. And then you can see here, it tells you to transfer to another bowl. So I've got this here, the first lot cooked, and then I have added the remainder, which is the 250 grams uh, that's left. And here I've added, um, it asks you to add the, um, the 70 grams of tomato paste. You've got um, some paprika, you've got some chili powder, you've got some dried oregano, you've got some passata, and I've got bought passata here, but as um, clearly I mentioned before, you can make your own. And we normally do, but we just didn't have any today. So I've also got here um, some vegetable stock, which is always in the fridge. We've talked about that before. Um, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't even buy any chicken or beef stock. I always use my veggie stock. It's always there. So that's my go-to for stock. And then salt. I've chosen not to put salt in because I think there's enough salt. Um, there will be a little bit remaining from the zucchini, so I haven't put any salt in here. And then it's got pepper, and then it's telling me to put the remainder of the of what I've cooked already, the reserved mince. I'll put that in there, and then I'm going to cook that for another five minutes. Um, but I won't do that now. I'm just going to add it there and just show you the steps and I'm going to throw in the spices and herbs and then it's going to ask for the five minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take that off and so that I can show you how to do the top, I'm going to use my other bowl and that takes me to, tells me to have a nice clean bowl, preheat my oven to 190 degrees, which is done. And then it's asking me to arrange the, um, the zucchini. So basically what you do, if you've got your dish, whatever dish you like, you can do a large one, small one, uh, the choice is yours. Layer that and then you put your meat as you go through and then you layer it again. And then what we do for the top is we put in our, we've got mozzarella, which I've got here. So I'm going to pop that in. And then parmesan, I've got 60 grams. That can go in. And then it asks for some fresh basil. So in that goes. And then it's asking me for the lid. So I'll pop that on and blitz that. And then it's asking for the ricotta and an egg. And I've been too slow to do my egg, so that's done now. So I'll show you that. That's what we've got with our mix. We're going to add on our ricotta. Now you can make your own ricotta or you can buy the good stuff from the deli. The choice is yours. We've got that in. I've got an egg. In that goes and some Italian herbs. So in we go. I'm going to push the sides down and then we're going to mix that again. Pop on our lid and 
and then it's five seconds. Speed four. And we're done. And then all I need to do is smooth that over the top of our um, mitts. It's just a creamy sort of look. And we don't need to put any other um, cheese on there. That's all there. And then what I'll do shortly is I'll come back and I'll show you a plate of that one that I've done already. So yeah, that's pretty easy. It's, um, it's something you can have in the fridge or take to work and it's, it's very easy. So there. I am, I am feeling very inspired. And I was just, I popped in the chat, just I can imagine what your house smells like that fresh basil and cheese together has been going, oh, I think I need to make this very soon. Thank yeah. you, Kathy. And uh, um, Kathy's going to come back at the end, but uh, Anne's just asked the question, you do multiple layers of the zucchini and the mint, yeah. don't you? Like yeah. you would with the start pasta. on the bottom, yeah. Start on the bottom with a layer of zucchini, then put um, your sauce, then, then more zucchini. I did about, um, two, uh, about three, but you can do more, so... Yeah, and, and it would depend on the size of your um can, your dish. dish yeah. um, the dish, be. the first dish I used was was a bit shallower than this one, so I thought, oh, I need a bigger one. So that's why I say it's it does quite a large amount. So this will be good for lunches for us to take to work next week, and um, yeah, we could probably put some in the freezer too because I've actually got two now. <laughs> Fantastic! Thank you very much. Now. I tried to give her a scare before and go to her a bit early, but we are actually going over to Sharon now. So I will pop her up. And Sharon, do you want me to, to also share the top of your Thermomix? That's right. So I'll add that. So you've got, you should have two, um, two photos. There you go. Over to you, Sharon. And you can explain what you're making because you will pronounce it much better than I do. Um, hi, everyone. I'm making Kam Hyong. Prawns, which is actually a golden fragrance um, prawns. Um, the reason why it's called golden fragrance is because of all the ingredients I'm using to give it that beautiful ar the aromatics. And it's golden in color because of that curry powder that we'll put into it. So I've actually started by heating the oil while I was waiting because it takes a little while. Um, and then I add in some prawns to do the high heat. And the reason why I, I had a top camera is to make sure that to show you that you don't, you have to make sure the prawns are all around and not on top of the blade at all. And the reason being is that heat for the high heat is just only at the bottom and make sure that you don't go over the weight. Um, a little bit over like a prawn or two will be fine, but you want to make sure that everything gets cooked e evenly. Otherwise it, it doesn't. Okay, so just to make sure. So I just, sorry, go so next. Sharon, there's a question about whether your prawns are peeled or not, but I'm thinking no, because no. I see their little legs waving at me. So yes, yeah. whole Un prawns. Whole prawns with heads and everything. Yep. yep. I just, uh, I'll show you in a minute what I did when we go into that six minutes of cooking. So. Without measuring cup, go next. I'm gonna put the splash guard in. If you haven't done high heat, you always have to use the splash guard, which just sits in one position, which is the same as the arm of the handle. And it doesn't lock in or anything. You, and you do have to let it know uh, that you've done, uh, let the Thermomix know that you've done it. So you have to click done. Now, if you do forget, just go on the reverse button here and go forward again, next, and then just do it. Repeat, it, okay? And if we're going to be cooking for four minutes. Um, and just to show you while that's cooking, so the prawns have little, little uh, feelers. So what you want to do is just to make it neat and tidy so you don't get a lot of things around. Um, I actually just snip that off so that it's very neat. Okay, and it does, the recipe says to de-vein. You don't have to, but
But if you need to, I'm just going to show you what you do. You cut the top here. And what you want to do is look for the vein that's on top and slowly, slowly pull it out. Can you see that vein? So you just slowly pull this one out and then also pull out from the back side. Oops, sorry. And just tug it very gently, otherwise it breaks. And that's all it is. So you can devein it and flavors will just go into the prawn, into the head and everything. So my tip, if, you, if you're somebody who doesn't like the smell of um, prawns on your hands, um, using lemon, cut lemon, rubbing your hands with cut lemon is a really good way to, um, to cut that, um, that odour off your hands. The other option, of course, is to use really fine gloves and that way the smell doesn't get on your hands at all in the first place. Back to you, Sharon. Okay. We're so still on the high heat and we've got another two minutes left. Um, not sure what to tell you. Uh, after this dish, I was thinking of, because there's still a lot of that sauce left behind, I can actually do a high heat vegetable. So what I do is I actually look for a high heat prawn recipe um, and utilize that dish by uh, putting in the garlic pieces in. Don't, don't chop it too fine, okay? In a high heat, never chop your garlic fine, fine because it's just gonna burn. So what you want to do is do nice thick pieces because you want to flavor that oil while it's cooking. And then you put in your uh, vegetable in, about 200, 200 grams of uh, any Chinese vegetable like bok choy, uh, for example. And mm, I can smell that prawns. Uh, and just uh, do a fry. And then what you have will, um, three minutes later, set it to three minutes. And what you will have is prawns and your vegetable dish. What was and, that question? Uh, someone was asking if there's any reason why you couldn't peel the prawns. And I've, my answer is you can peel them, but the shells actually help keep the flavour in, don't they? Yeah, there's a lot of flavour in the prawn head. So if you ever had any uh, Asian um, base soups, they always use the leftover shells plus the heads to make the stock. And Thermomix is really, really awesome for doing prawn stocks. And you can also make prawn oil from that. And you're a bit of an expert on our high heat dishes and, and other Asian high heat dishes. What are some other dishes that you would recommend people try if they've got the TM6? Uh, my go-to dish is, uh, is actually a Thai dish. It's called Pat Kho Pao. Um, that's by that, uh, what's his name? The chef from Brisbane, I think. He is, uh, Matt, or, um, Matt Sinclair from Noosa. He, he owns the uh, Some Young Guys. <laughs> Yep. you have to book months in advance to get into. He's got a whole collection of high heat recipes on Cookie Do because he helped us to launch the TM6. So if you ever want to make yourself beautiful um, rice paper rolls or wonton soup, his recipes are the bomb. And I love that you actually use his one um, as your go-to, Sharon. Oh, now we can see into the dish and see those prawns. So we set it aside. And the smell is amazing. And that's just prawns cooking. I might have missed it at the beginning, Sharon. Can you just remind us what sort of oil you were using as you were cooking the prawns? Now uh, you can use, I know a lot of people are into the health of oils. Usually with Asian cooking, we just use plain vegetable oil. I prefer to use a nut-based oil like peanut oil because it also adds flavor. But because this one has curry in it, um, you can use a light flavored uh, olive oil, okay, which is what I'm using now. So because that olive doesn't hit or distract from the fla actual flavors of the dish. Okay, so I've set the um, I've set that aside. 
Now I'm going to do the aromatic part or the flavoring of the prawns, uh, which is ginger, um, shallot, eschalot, sorry, uh, garlic and chili in here. That goes all in. I've got my dried prawns, which I've been soaking. So that softens it up. So it's not so tough when it chops. And that goes in. Measuring cup. It's going to be a little bit loud. It's only five seconds of that. And while while Sharon's doing that, I've actually popped. It's only five seconds. And just remember, oh, the, <coughs> sorry. Chili and, uh, and onions. I'm not very good with onions also. So just remember to uh, use your spatula following the same direction as the blunt of the bait so that you don't um, nip it. And this is how you can keep your spatula life a little bit longer. Okay. And it's asking for 30 grams of oil. Uh, oil. So I'm just using olive oil here. Just remember a little bit over, a little bit under is fine. Um, this, I put extra garlic in it and a little bit more ginger because I love that stronger flavors. Um, it's asked for a stock of um, lemongrass, which is bashed in so that it releases the flavor. I've got my curry leaves, which are from my, my mom grows these, so it's really nice. And what is it? I've got curry. So that's the curry powder in there. And is that the curry? Do you make your own curry powder from the cookie dough recipe, Sharon? You can. I do. It's I love that <laughs> curry powder. I'm going to add the recipe in the chat. Yes, you can. I actually use uh, the one from the, remember TM31s? It had the Asian... You had this Asian um, cookbook. I, I use that because that's a Nonya flavored. Uh, ah, flavored. I forgot, I'd forgotten that curry powder. We'll have to see what it's called on Cookie Do these days. Yeah. And I put all that in. So it was uh, soy sauce and sugar together. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you. That was sugar and soy sauce all in together. The sugar will bring out the flavors of the salt, believe it or not. Without that sugar, that salt flavor will just be ma. And it just accentuates the, all the other flavors that you have in there. Oops. And then we're just going to cook those flavors together. Oh, sorry. I think I went ahead, didn't I? That's all right. Well, while those flavors are cooking together, we're going to give you a chance to pull it all together and cook it. And we're going to cross over to Christine. And Christine is going to unmute herself so she can talk to you. And while she's doing that, uh, Christine's going to be cooking the salmon nishwa salad, which I have always wanted to make. So I'm mm. very, very, very keen to, uh, to see how it turns out. I'll just get all the right spotlights on. So Christine's on our uh, screen. And welcome, Christine. Over Thank you. you. Thanks so much, Teresa. Thanks, um, everyone, for joining us this evening. Um, there's been some really beautiful meals here tonight, and I hope you're getting some great ideas. Um, there's a huge array. We'd like to try to make it as diverse as possible. I am doing a salmon dish, which is, as Teresa said, a Niswa salad. Um, it is French um, and it can be really great as cold. So you can make it ahead, have it in the fridge, serve it when, when you get home. If you have something on, you can have it fresh out of um, the Varoma. It's up to you. So I love the versatility of this dish. Um, as you can see, it is a tiered cooking dish. It'll use everything from the Varoma and inside we have the simmering basket, which I will show you soon. Um, it's from the Meals in a Flash cookbook. So as you can imagine, it's quick. 
Um, it's a, I believe it's 30, it's 35 minutes all together. Um, so, but as I said, whether you make it before, have it later, make it now, it's just great. I really, and it's really fresh. Everything I find, everything cooks perfectly, which I will show you very soon. So all I've done is gone ahead and um, steamed um, every all the main components, which um, we'll go through soon. So inside is just the water and salt. That's literally it. And in the Varoma, starting from the top down, we've got the beans, just nice cut in half, simple, very simple. The next layer is the salmon. So as you can see, all fit nicely. I've used um, a trivet underneath. I hope you can sort of see that. That just helps to raise um, whatever is in there. If it gets a bit full in there and the steam can't quite get around, then you'll find things don't really heat or cook or even cook eat or cook evenly. So I find, I, I really like the trivet. I use it when I do a whole chicken, steam a whole chicken as well, just to really ensure that the steam can get underneath and around the whole thing. So, pop that down on the lid like that. Using my small, small space and inside, using our spatula to get it out, we have our simmering basket. And inside, as you can see, it's all nice and cool, so it's safe to touch. Um, we literally just nestled the eggs on top of the potatoes. I hope you can see that. So it literally jams everything in, but it still all cooks. Beautifully, I love it. I think it's a, it's a really great dish, I must admit. Um, so that's what I've just gone ahead and done just so you don't have to watch <laughs> steaming for 15 minutes. Now we're going to jump to the dressing that comes with it. So we'll jump and this is a nice neat trick. If you do need to jump to a step in on, on the actual thermomix, you can just hit that step you wanna to go to and I'll take you there. So I'm just gonna pop in um, the first two ingredients, which is just, an, again, an echelot and some anchovy fillets. Um, now, not everyone's a fan of anchovy. I appreciate that. I love it. Um, I love that saltiness, but if you do need substitutes, my first go-to is capers. Um, again, I do like that saltiness, um, but you can also use, I understand, you know, Worcestershire sauce, shrimp paste. So it really depends on your flavors and what you like. Um, but uh, just have a play. I don't know the actual ratios for the substitution. So just be careful because they are all very salty um, substitutions. Just gonna chop that up. That's actually three seconds. And uh, nice, it's gonna be nice and chunky as you can see. So we're just gonna scrape all that down, nice and quick. I love echelots. I don't know if everyone really knows what echelots are. I only learned about echelots from being a Thermomix consultant, I must admit. And um, it's a beautiful balance between the strength of a white onion and um, sort of the subtlety of a, um, a shallot. So um, yeah, beautiful. So the next one, next part I'm gonna do, again, I've already just sort of pre-measured it all out, is a half a teaspoon of caster sugar, Dijon mustard, lemon juice, and olive oil. Um, I've stuck to all the measurements. Again, if you like certain amounts more of, of certain flavors, maybe a bit more heat from the Dijon, um, a bit more sweet from the sugar, more than welcome to adjust as, uh, as you prefer. I like it, to be honest, exactly the way it is. Beautiful. So we popped all that in. And just five more seconds. And there we go, seasoned with salt and pepper, which also I've added in because I know that I like salt and pepper. So that is literally all it is for your dressing. Um, oh, excuse me, I forgot, I forgot the lemon juice, my apologies. I'll just quickly whiz that one around one more time. That's not gonna make much of a difference. Oops, there we go. Beauty of being live, hey? Eh? There we go, that's better. There we go. So the next steps are literally just to construct it. Um, so there we go, that's a bit better. That's the dressing. <laughs> so 
The next step are just to literally construct it, um, which you can go by what the recipe says, which says put it all in a bowl and put the dressing on top and toss it around. Completely up to you. I, um, I certainly find that with the dressing being quite the acquired taste, it's just that little bit more accommodating, if you will, for even just family, but if you are serving to guests, just to have it in a, in a jar like this or in a um, serving, uh, serving a sauce like that, and then they can do their own sauce. So but what, if you were to do the bowl method, that's where these really come in handy. Um, part of the method while you're making the dressing is to keep everything nice and warm if you'd like again. And again, that's where the thermo service will really come in handy. Um, plus it looks really pretty on the, on the uh, table. So, but for this, for the purposes of today, I'm gonna to use it as a stand to elevate my plate. And I'm just gonna quickly pop all this together for you and just show you how easy it is to make. So again, being a salad, you can just use as much or as little um, as you like. I'm going to start with the potatoes on the bottom, a bit of nice greenery. Okay. And the salmon. So again, you can have the salmon whole or flaked. The recipe asks for flaked. I like it to flake around. So as you can see, it's just cooked beautifully. I hope you can see that. It's just, it's just perfect for me. We love it like that. Um, it does give you the option to increase the cooking time if you do prefer everything a little bit more cooked, that's up to you. But honestly, I found um, the beans are crispy, the fish is medium, the eggs are medium, the potatoes are perfect. Honestly, I found everything is perfect. <laughs> so I love it. Um, so, and here come the fresh ingredients, which again, no cooking. So you literally just prep and go. So just chuck on a few tomatoes, a few olives. We love the chili garlic olives, Kalamata olives. They're always lovely, but obviously you can do whatever pitted olives you'd like. And just again, a bit more fresh spring onions. And, uh, in good TV style, here's some eggs I have prepared earlier, so you don't have to watch me peel an egg. So here we go. There we go, beautiful. Got everything in, add the anchovy dressing. And I think that is pretty perfect. So that's me. I was probably one of the quickest ones on show, but that oh. is literally demonstrating how easy this dish is. <laughs> that is absolutely appetising. It just, and, and again, you're right, being able to steam your fish, have your eggs and your potatoes just right, and then that dressing at the end mm. brings it all together. And it's a really good reminder that the Thermomix doesn't have to be all about stews and all the rest of it. It can yeah. be about beautiful, fresh, crisp food. So thank you, Christine. That looks Delicious. Again, I say Uber Eats to the country would be awesome. Right? <laughs> Probably wouldn't last the journey, though. I reckon any driver would be eating it on the way. Um, thank you very much. Now we're going to cross back to Sharon uh, and then back to Kathy and to Linda so we can see all the finished results. So let me get the right person on screen. So I've got Sharon. Oh, no, I've, now I've lost Sharon as well. There you go. I'm going to add a spotlight. Did it, in case you haven't gathered, I'm not a professional camera person. Uh, so, Sharon, we've got your top camera working. We don't have you on the screen. Is that it? Oh, okay. here we go. We've got both of you. All right. Short arms, a bit hard to reach. <laughs> okay, so the, the sauce has made. So I've put in the prawns, and that's going to cook for a couple of minutes. And what I want to tell you is... Um, as it's cooking, um, depending on the size of the prawns, so you, if you pick, I would recommend small to medium sized prawns so that it cooks through. I pick medium prawns. Um, and what happens is you can either, um, I found that it, it can be undercooked. If it's undercooked, just recook it for one to two minutes. You don't want it overcooked. So I, I would do one. Or you can just leave it in the uh, in the pot in the bowl once it's finished, so that it continues cooking. Or in the other choice, you can and if you want to continue cooking with somebody else, something else, you can just put, pop it into your thermo server so it keeps it warm and still continues cooking on. Oh, the smell here is amazing. All I can smell is ginger curry. It's 
very aromatic. Oh, um, with the pot crow pal, what I wanted to tell you is it is the sauces in there uh, a little bit too salty for my liking. So I actually cut mm -hmm. down on the sauce, which is your fish sauce down to 30 grams, your oyster sauce also down to 30 grams. I don't put in any stock because it's really, really too salty for me. That is a really good tip, Sharon. And I find with um, any of those recipes, but you know, particularly those that Matt Sinclair collection that we've popped the link in to the chat for, um, it is a case of actually adding the flavours gently and then working out what works for you because everyone's got different tastes about the amount of salt, the amount of spice. So layering them in until they get to the point you want is perfect. Yep. Now I can see your screen's just about finished cooking. Yes. I think it's going on with this. <laughs> while it's uh, while that's continuing, Anne Marie's asked in the chat, does anyone have uh, favourite prawn dishes? And I have to say, the uh, garlic and chilli prawns that take about ten minutes on high heat in the TM six have to be one of my favourites. Really quick, really flavoursome, and great if someone pops around and you've got them in the freezer pull them out, defrost them, whip it up, and they're very nice with a uh, cold beverage or two. Back to you, Sharon. So it's done. So as I said, you, you need to see if your prawns are cooked. If it's not cooked, just cook them for a minute longer. And all you do is just take a look at the top here to see whether it's still raw. If it's still raw, just put it in for a minute longer or let it sit in, this, uh, sit in the pot to let it continue cooking. And prawns cook very quick. It doesn't take much to cook it. As you can see, we, we only took like seven minutes all together in the time. And then all you do is just serve it up onto a plate. And this is... And if you want to do double quantities, so what I have here is two quantities. I would, I would um, fry the prawns first, twice before you do the flavours. They so do two batches of prawns and then a single lot of double flavours. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or if you like the strong flavours, you can do double amounts of the flavours itself. Fantastic. And if we can have a look at those colours, that looks incredibly appetising. Oh, thank you, Sharon. You're Dinner welcome. Tonight will be very nice. Again, I'm a little bit jealous. I, I swear. We have to make it. I know, but I'm also thinking for the next cooking class, I might have to do some cooking. So I'm not here salivating over everyone else's dishes, and I've actually got something to eat myself. Um, we're going to go back to Kathy, who is going to show us the zucchini lasagna. No warning at all, Kathy. Here you go. Oh, good. I was just on saying uh, any favourite prawn dishes. I love the prawn saganaki. It's a, it's a really quick and easy dish. <laughs> I have so, added, I've actually added that link in the chat as a great prawn dish that uh, you can also make in the tank. Great. So we're it's all on good. the same page. That's good. There you go. So here, I don't know if you can see this. I'll come up a bit closer. This is the finished product. So as you can see, that looks pretty good. Um, that, these topping looks beautiful. Yeah, it's really good. And the thing that makes it look probably a little bit browner is the um, the the Italian herbs throughout it. So yeah, it's really good. And I don't know if you can see some of the layers there of the zucchini at the side, but yeah, it's um, it looks good. It, it looks fantastic and a really good gluten-free alternative. Mm -hmm. um, yep. and, and a low carb alternative. Mm -hmm. so yep. One of those. I'm adding that to my list. Thank you very much. I like the fact you've got a glass of wine. They're just ready to go so you can serve it up. I, bet, but I, I better move it. I might spill it, so yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you. And now we are back to Linda with the enchiladas. So let's go back to back, back to the Clontarf kitchen. To the Clontarf kitchen. Okay. Now I've plated it up, taken it out of the oven. So that's the. I'm trying to get my angle right. That's the actual um, oven dish. And then I've just um, served it up. I'm trying to get my angles. Not very good at this. Served it up with a nice side salad. Um, so yeah, it's just simple, as I said, really quick midweek. Um, throw it in the um, oven, and you can actually make those little um, 
wrappy things or the enchilada things before. I double cling wrap it if I'm going to put it in the freezer. Sometimes I make smaller versions. So I just get smaller wraps and put it in a smaller container. And then I can just pull it out and throw it in the oven. But it really is just a quick one you can make on the go as well. So midweek, that one is a real winner. And, you know, my husband gets a bit fussy if there's no potatoes or rice or lots of starch and stuff, but he's quite happy to have this with a side salad. So he is my uh, taste tester. And uh, often if it passes him, it will pass both blokes. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So now, have I, Clelia, is it that Clelia should be ready to? I'm just going to make sure we've got. Yeah, she's been ready for about half an hour. <laughs> I know. I, I was like, I've forgotten someone. With all the talking, maybe 35 minutes. So it's pretty good. Um, I had it on camera before. So that yeah. is the pasta which looks fantastic. I got it in our um, thermo server. So it's actually still hot. So if my family hurries up and gets back home, we can possibly just have that for dinner as it is. I haven't even covered it. So that's pretty good. Looks exactly like the picture. Um, all I've added is just some pine nuts that I've toasted um, with just some basil and just make it look pretty. And what I've got here as an addition is something else that is very quick that I actually made this afternoon um, you know, um, as I was actually getting ready for the class. So it's a 30 second orange cake. So, you know, we're only locked down, not much happening. Why not eating cake after dinner? It's a very tiny thing to do. Um, so, so I, I literally whipped up a cake, 30 seconds. It's a recipe community. I'm gonna share the link in a second. Um, I didn't wanna spoil the surprise, but, and I just baked it in a mini loaf um, tin, but I was so excited. I got this one from the mix shop. It arrived today and it's dirty because I literally just used it. So apologies for that. But um, I baked the, hot, the orange cake recipe inside this one. And I made these little cakes that we're going to have for dinner after the pasta. How good is they, that? They look amazing. <laughs> and I'm a little bit jealous. I did a mix shop order the other day and I completely forgot that I wanted to get the little mini loaf things. Oh, I'm just going to have to shop again. It's brilliant because the cake takes an hour to cook, but if you pop it in the little tin, it was only 20, 25 minutes in my oven. Yeah. So <laughs> you can have literally both happening within just over half an hour. I could, um, I could, of course, just use the muffin trays, but, you know, I need an excuse to do more shopping in the mix shop. So you've given it to me. It's fantastic. Thank you. Mm. All right. So now you get to come back to me. I think I'm wrapping up the end. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Now, as I promised at the beginning, we are I am going to stay on and I am going to talk about how you too could become a consultant and learn all these amazing tips and tricks like our beautiful presenters today. Um, so please do stick around. But if you don't have time and you need to go, just to make sure you all know, we will be sending out an email that has links to all the recipes we made tonight. And if we're really organised, we'll include the links to the additional suggestions that we made because, you know, you can never have too many ideas in your toolbox when it comes to what's for dinner. So thank you all very much. Before I jump into telling you about how easy and awesome it is to become a Thermomix consultant, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat and we'll make sure that we answer them as we go. Now, there's a few names that I've seen in the chat as people who attend our classes regularly. If you're someone who attends regularly and you're picking up all these tips and tricks, can I tell you the next logical step is to become a consultant because that's how we all got our advanced Thermomix knowledge. Um, my little story is I was actually a Thermomix owner for seven years before I became a consultant. And I honestly think I doubled my knowledge of how to use my Thermomix in the first six months. Um, actually, that's lying. I learned more in the first six months than I had in the previous seven years. And I thought I was a bit of an expert. So, you know, proof that there's always room to learn new things. You're never too old to learn something new. Um, but also the great advantages of being a consultant. So, and I can see all the beautiful thanks coming through in the chat. You're all very welcome. Um, but what I am going to do now is just play a little video and just talk over it. So it just explains a bit about becoming a consultant. Before I do that, though, I really want to quickly tell you that to, if you've already got a TM6, did you know at the moment it only costs $62.50 to buy your business kit and start as a consultant? And during lockdown, don't worry, 
we're all working from home on camera, just like we have been today. We all make mistakes. We're all very clunky and real and we're still having fun. So don't think you have to be an expert, honestly. If you were here for one of the classes where Linda almost poured stock all over her Thermomix, you know, that was a good one to uh, just set us up to show we're very real. Tonight you saw Christine, I hate to point this out, Christine, she forgot an ingredient. That's okay, we're real. You just go back and add it, keep going. So you definitely don't have to be an expert. Um, and as you've seen with my clunky camera, uh, camera work, you also don't have to be an expert camera person. So all of that being said, let me just share my screen and find where I set that beautiful video ready to go, which of course has now disappeared because that was way too way to set up for me. Hang on a minute. Films, films, films. Did I mention I'm really clunky at this? We'll see how we go. All right. I'm going to share screen. That was what I was showing you before. Here we go. All right. So we've got a little three minute video. And as we always like to say from the beginning, it's a family owned business. So Grace and Bianca, who you see on the screen, are the people that own the business. Um, and their mission is to have a Thermomix at the heart of every kitchen. You can come on board to earn your Thermomix. You can come on board to have more income for you and your family. You might want a bit of financial freedom. You might want to actually have your own small business in a really safe way. You might want more time for the things you love. You might be interested in personal development. Our training is awesome. It's also a really good way to meet new people and build community. It's a great way to plan for retirement. It's also a really good way to, if you like helping other people, it's fantastic. But you might have a different reason that you're interested in coming on board. Some of the great stuff about it is it's really flexible. You can either bring your Thermomix, you can buy a Thermomix, or you can earn a Thermomix. We also have commission. The more you sell, the less you pay if you're earning a Thermomix. Um, the whole kit is half price at the moment. So there's all these gorgeous things you get. As I said, $62.50. And you're in charge of your income. So you can get commission on each sale that you make. You can earn commission on things that people buy from the mix shop in your name. If you recruit someone to join the business, you get a one-off payment as a thank you. But there's also other incentives and rewards that you earn along the way. Um, you can become a leader like Clelia is tomorrow and earn some commission. And you get paid on a sliding scale. So the more you sell, the more you earn. Um, and we do have people who have those 10 plus sale months because they've worked hard, they've built their business and their customers love them and refer their friends. But of course, there's also more to life than money. So we have lots of opportunities. Obviously, we're not traveling a lot at the moment, but we have other milestone uh, incentives that help you get going at the beginning from cookbooks, etc. What does a consultant do? You share the Thermomix, just like we have been this afternoon. Um, you stay up to date by coming along to meetings and training, which are always a lot of fun. You provide support to your customers. We really do come from a place of service. You do what I'm doing now and promote the business opportunity. You introduce the Thermomix to at least one home a month and you run cooking experiences, which effectively is getting together and cooking with your friends, cooking with your customers, making sure they understand how to use their Thermomix, running cooking classes like we have this afternoon, doing cookie do sessions so that people understand. I can show you how to use cookie do a little bit more after this. But if you're ready to get started, then our training is all done online at the moment, but it can always also be face to face when lockdown's over. Plus we have ongoing training all the time. So if you're into personal development, honestly, it's the place to be. Um, and then you just have to think about who do you know? We call it your Franco list, friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors online. People, not who are ready to buy, but people who might want to see the Thermomix. And in case you missed that last little bit there, it's if you're looking for a sign, this might be it. All right. Having zoomed through that, I will stop sharing. And with all of that said, does anyone have any questions about becoming a Thermomix consultant? Um, and I love Christine has popped in the chat. She has just started as a consultant up in Queensland, inspired by her beautiful friend, Debbie Tong, after having a Thermomix for seven years as well. Yep. So there's absolutely no rules on when you can become a Thermomix consultant. And, uh, you know, 
if you've got questions, this is the time to ask them because you've got a whole bunch of people who've done it before ready to answer them.